What is it about Jack the Ripper that still captivates minds around the world 135 years later? Prostitutes viciously murdered as the murderer slips away into the darkness. First thing that I'm getting right right off the the, the female energy around him, which I'm I'm I get the sense that there were other siblings as well in the yes. home. I see at least one K and Jean as they delve into the mysteries of Jack the Ripper. Welcome to Looking for the Lost. I'm Kay. I'm Jean. And we are looking for the lost. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Yes, welcome. Season three, everybody. We are yes. here. Season three. <laughs> yes. Now, I know in the last two seasons that we've had our third person, Asia Kim, who is with us. Uh, she has been so busy that uh, she's not able to join us for this season. And we wish her the best. So we do that. And we do want to say that we use graphics in our show. So if you want to get the full effect, you can watch the show on YouTube or see some of the graphics on our website. Now, the content of this show in particular may be too graphic for children or may trigger trauma in some. So we suggest that you do have discretion on how you listen or watch the show. And remember, guys, we prefer to work on cold cases that are 50 plus years old for the podcast. But our spotlights, we use more current cases to bring awareness to the public in the hopes that we will bring these people home safely. Absolutely. And our spotlight is about Devin Sequoia Cooper, who is a transgender woman who has been missing since August of 2021. And you'll be able to see that presentation later. So, Kay, yes. let's delve into it, honey. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's do this. We're working on Jack the Ripper. This has been um, one that I've been wanting to do since season one. And we're mm. finally doing it. So let's get started. Okay. So let's um let's just do a real quick initial finding to see what we can gather just off the cuff about whoever Jack the Ripper may be or whoever is responsible for the murder of these ladies. Okay. All right. All, All right. right. So let's do that. First thing that I'm getting right right off the bat is um, one of that, the, I don't know the name of it, the typical male hat. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a, a long, dark colored, like a coat, but it, it, it almost feels like a, a, like a duster. Do you, do you remember those duster coats? Yes. It yes, feels like that, but it's 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 long. It feels long. The the first thing I'm getting impression is I'm going back to who this person was as a child, to his upbringing, mm -hmm. and I, I'm I'm seeing him as as a as abused. I feel there was yeah. emotional abuse, yeah, and and physical, but I I feel that his and it the the female energy around him which i'm i'm feeling is a mother or a mother figure that yeah. uh i felt there was mental illness i'm feeling some with type of mother. mental with the mother so yes, i'm feeling I, it i feel like that too okay so i'm feeling there was some type of mental illness with that mother um i don't feel that they were you know as far as their their economic range I didn't I don't feel that they were extremely poor and they weren't rich they weren't uh nobles um there was somewhere in between and maybe what we would consider like lower middle class uh, and that's what I'm picking at so I don't feel that they were like 
they were middle class or, or edging on lower, but I don't, I don't sense them being in a higher uh, echelon of the people. You know, I, as you're mentioning the, the mother there and the mental illness, I, I feel that as well. And, and it almost to me feels like it's an in and out and in and out mm -hmm. psychosis kind of thing. Yeah. So like schizophrenia or bipolar or mm -hmm. it, it doesn't feel like it's a constant and it feels almost as if there's this walking on eggshells around this lady. It just feels like there's there's moments of quiet and then there's moments of just pure pandemonium and yelling and manic. I manic, feel like manic. Yes. Manic. Yes, I think okay. so. I so feel I'm, that as I'm, well. yeah, I'm feeling it's a manic, like a, a psychotic, psychotic episode that would take place. Episodes, absolutely. Yeah. And yes. this definitely affected him growing up. Um, I, I get the sense that there were other siblings as well in the yes. home. I see at least another brother that would have been in in the home, and I do get a sense of fear, absolutely fear. Yes. Um, and also of hiding as well with these two boys hiding mm -hmm. to uh, escape. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling, though, with with the brother or the sibling that was there. Um, I, I'm feeling like Jack was younger. I got that sense. As Do you well. get that, too? And so I, I felt like the, the older brother. Um, I felt like he he left at some point. I feel like he left. He didn't stay. It could have been when he got a little older, when he was able on his own, and Jack was still in the household. But I feel like he left at some point, and Jack was on his own. I feel yeah. like he left at a, a relatively young age for now. For yes. Today's uh, time frame um, at a very young age. Right. Uh, four, like 14. 14. I've uh, seen yeah, and I feel like that the age at the age where he was able to go get a work, like right. you know, work somewhere, be apprentice yeah. or something of that that nature. But I feel that he left. Um, I don't sense. I'm I'm not feeling like there was a father figure around. You know, it's funny you say that because I was just searching that, and I'm not <laughs> seeing a man in this no either yeah but as i say that i feel as almost as if absence but not not absent in the way that he's gone and he's never coming back mm -hmm. absent in that perhaps his father's work took him away yes and then he had to come back that's the feeling yeah, uh, that, but you would be away for a, a, a good, long time. Long time. I'm feeling that too. Come back. Yeah. That's yeah, feeling. I'm feeling that he would. It'd be long stretches. And as I say that, I I'm seeing the sea. Mm. So, okay, is that that he he would leave on the sea, and that's where his work was, or is that that he would have to go across the seas? to do his work, but I just see that there. Um, I'm, I'm feeling possibly a mariner, one that would possibility, get on the ships and um, like do trade, trading, importing, you know, some, some sort, but, um, but I feel very much that yes, he was gone quite a bit. I, I feel that Jack, but we call him Jack. Uh, you know, we don't really know his name yet. Uh, no, but but uh, for lack of a better uh, name, I, f I feel that he was very smart. Very, very smart. Very intelligent. Um, and, mm -hmm. you, you know, um, I'm just looking to, to get a sense of what kind of work jack did as a mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. and it's interesting i'm looking i i'm i'm focusing in on his hands at the moment mm -hmm. and i can see coming from his hands green energy that that's for so, me 
is a healer. Okay. So okay. a healer can be like a doctor. Okay. Or it could be a vet. It could be, you know, I don't, but I see green. Did what, what, what were you seeing? Well, you said green, but I keep hearing the word about finance. Oh, I keep for money. Yeah. There's that there's something about him with money. He was he was good at something about money or business. He was he was good at. Um, well, you'd have to have to be able to manage things. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I'm I'm because uh, I mean, what I'm feel, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just saying, green can, green can also represent. It could represent money, but for me, if it's coming from the hands, mm -hmm. there's something there with healing. Okay. For me. Yeah, I, I keep hearing finance of some sort. And like I said, it could be um business or six or something of success. And if that ties in, you know, with I mean, even Absolutely. if that yeah. with being a doctor or, you know, or some type of healing profession, then yeah, you're successful. But you know, you well, you're saying that I'm not sure he was. Okay. I'm not sure that he was successful. Okay. Maybe that could be part of the downfall. Mm. Part of the spiraling out of control. I just get this feeling here with him. And it's that in life, I feel his adult life could be as chaotic and manic as it was in childhood. Mm -hmm. So that just leads me to want to dive into that of why, you know, was he, him, did, he, did Jack himself suffer from mental illness of some sort? Or was it just that he couldn't get his life together? and perhaps because of his upbringing. There are four likely suspects who did suffer from some sort of mental illness. Montague John Druitt uh, was one. He feared that he had become insane just like his mother and he committed suicide by drowning. The murders ceased after his drowning his family believe him to be the murderer, but he had no known connection to Whitechapel. Another suspect was Michael Ostrop. He was detained in a lunatic asylum as a homicidal maniac. He was not known to be violent, though. He was a thief. After further investigations, the police determined him to be highly unlikely as a suspect. A third suspect was Aaron Kaminsky. Now he died in an asylum. He was a paranoid, delusional, schizophrenic, and very, very violent. He was a hairdresser by trade. Aaron Kaminsky is thought to be by many people who have studied Jack the Ripper to be high on the list of possibilities of being Jack the Ripper. Now, there was a fourth person named Frederick Bailey Deeming who became emotionally distraught after his mother died. He was a seafaring man and he fell prey to a severe attack of brain fever and never fully recovered. He was known to have committed acts of ludicrous nature, claiming his mother had told him to do so from beyond the grave. His first wife and children mysteriously went away. His second wife was found with her throat cut. He was convicted of murder, and he confessed he was responsible for two of the Whitechapel murders. However, it was later found that he was not in England during the time of the Whitechapel murders. I do feel he was a loner. 
Yeah, I do too. I, d- I don't feel him being uh, incredibly social. Yeah, I don't either. With people. I feel he was a loner. Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Withdrawn from society. Mm-hmm. And, and I, the feeling I get is, of course, not, of course, not being successful uh, romantically with ladies, you know, all that ties in with being a loner. But I, I feel that from there's this internal struggle within. I feel there's, he's fighting the, the urges within, but because of his um, childhood upbringing, and I, and I feel like there was a lot of rejection too, of some sort, you know, either yeah. from women or from whatever, his from his mother. And that flows into how he dealt with women. And then it's like all of that buildup and him not being, uh, him not being that well-rounded person. Mm-hmm. And, and I felt, I felt that he did visit prostitutes. I felt that he did go and see prostitutes, um, you know, just, just to have sex, just to have that moment. Yeah. So it wasn't like he hated prostitutes. Do you feel that at some point that maybe something happened with a prostitute? Or do you feel that he just, in general, I mean, I do feel in general, he he had a, a hatred towards women. But do you feel that something happened with a prostitute that that sent him over the edge with prostitutes versus just any woman? So I'm I think we're going to, I'm going to say yes, but I, I think that what, what I'm feeling is we have to go, I'm feeling to going back to his childhood. And there was a, there was a hatred for women or his mother. And, and I'm feeling like there was a lot of judgment for, and and I'd probably have to say it this way. There was um, a lot of shame, a lot of, of, shame about sex shame it was like that rigorous um i was uh, just feeling sexual abuse yes yes so it was there was the sexual abuse but it, i felt like there was this this dichotomy of like yeah there was a, there was abuse sexually but there was also a pretense of not you know or pretending that uh oh there you know sex and and anything right. like that is is horrible it's not godly it's not you know and exactly. this was part of this was part of her her manic thing that happens right. so i'm feeling there was like all this confusion yeah that was taking place in the home in the upbringing with the mother and so him having all of this going on in his head plus him being a, a type of man who would go to see prostitutes because this was his urge, you know, it's like, I want to have sex. Right. But then it, there's this shame. There's this anger about it. It's like all of this, I'm I'm seeing it like just ball of confusion. It's like all this, just messy. It's just messy. And so there's a hatred. Um, I do know, and this is not me feeling, but I do know with uh, serial killers, especially the ones that um, sexually abuse their victims and then kill them, it's erasing the shame. Oh, it's erasing the shame to like, I don't want to, you, you don't exist now. I want to get rid of it, you know, oh. because that's, you know, when you think of people like John Gacy and, and, um, you know, Ted Bundy and all this is like I'm erasing the shame. I'm I'm getting rid of it. But the, but it's an, but they keep going back. They keep going back. And so finding these and what I'm feeling now is finding these prostitutes that are on the street, and you know having 
following them, having the the urge to kill them. It's like I want to I want to get rid of that feeling, so I have to get rid of you. It started with Mary, supposedly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and her throat was slashed all the way, almost decapitating her. Right. But when it, when the next victim came along, it was more than just that. She was mutilated and just left lying for some unsuspecting person to find. My question then is, what is that about? We've gone from just slicing the throat, savagely slicing it, to now we're mutilating. What's going on with Jack? So definitely linking into that. Right. Okay. So, you know, for me, just as I close my eyes here and I, I link into that thought and I link into Jack the Ripper, I feel manic. I feel as if I've got, you know, I, I, I agree with you on that, that feeling of that confusion and, and, and whatnot but it feels way worse. It Mm -hmm. feels more manic. Mm -hmm. I can't get away from that word in that he doesn't know. It almost feels as if he's out of control here because he doesn't know how to stop the thoughts, stop what's going on with him internally. And it Mm -hmm. almost feels as if this is like you were saying, oh my God, it's like you were saying. It almost feels as if this is what he's got to do to stop this that's going on in the head. Yes. Isn't that what you just were saying? Yeah, I was saying that it, it that whole thing of like, I, I, I got to get rid of the, you know, all of this. And erase it. Erase it. Make I need it to stop. erase it. Make it stop. And this is what he's doing. Oh my God. Um, Yeah, I'm. I'm getting an image, actually. All um, right, good. What you getting? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I I don't feel that Jack is an older man. I don't either. I'm feeling he's he's relatively young. I would say twenties, thirties. Yep, that's where I'm at. And I see him as being tall. I see him as being a slim and tall. Um, I, I'm seeing him actually like in a, uh, like wearing a vest or the vest they had at that time. I'm seeing him in a, mm-hmm. the vest and the slacks. Um, I see, I see him, a uh, mustache. Mm. And I am seeing it like the, the urges are getting more intense and and I feel like the first kill was, okay, I'm done. That that that's over with. I'm done. But the urge but is not. It wasn't. It wasn't. No. So it was it, it it was just like he just was losing control. Absolutely losing control. And so yeah, it it was like just the killings got worse and worse. The yeah. more that he f- was fighting against it, the more intense the killings got. And, and just feeling like this incredible hatred for his mother. A lot. A lot. I am just feeling that it, he, it's like a rampage now. I, I just feel like there was a rampage at that point. I feel that he had conversations with these women, though, before they were killed. Do you think he knew them prior to Uh, that night? Did he know them or maybe just knew about them? I think he's seen them around. I think so, too. I I feel that he's seen them around. He knew what they were all about. Um, And that's why he was it was and they they may have seen him as well but he has definitely seen them and he was and he struck up conversations with them 
and and I feel that where he killed them, I mean, of course they were they were having sex out on the street, but I I feel like he knew the exact places where to go to to leave the body, to like really perform his uh, his killings where no one would see. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because they, I mean, he would, he would murder them so quickly. Yeah. Like within a 15 minute time period, and then the body would be discovered. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like he had this ability to just vanish. Yeah. All right. So I think we've gotten a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think so. This was definitely a, a good start. Uh, uh, yes. And um, if it's okay with you, I'd really like to just kind of bring this to a close because I want to, <laughs> I need to walk away from this energy because it, it's not, it's not a good one. So um, yeah, let's just bring this to a close. And then when we come back and re reconvene, let's take a look at suspects and see if we can't get a psychic feel to uh, one of these suspects or at least narrow it down because my goodness, there's a, there are many. There mm. are many. All right. So Jean, who is our spotlight for today? Our spotlight is a lovely, really lovely transgender woman by the name of Devin Sequoia Cooper, who has been missing since August of 2021. And the last time she was seen was in Columbus, Ohio. So let's take a look at this presentation. In October, on the west side of Columbus, an abandoned 2009 Black Ford Fusion had been discovered. The license plate did not match the owner's registration. Both the car and license plate have been gathered as evidence in the disappearance of Devin Cooper. Devin, who goes by the name Sequoia, is a transgender woman who was last seen leaving her home on North Linden in Columbus, Ohio on August 31st, 2021. Sequoia had left her partner's home around Crimeans Park to go get bottled water at a convenience store, but she never returned. She was last seen on the city's north side at Howie Road and Weldon Avenue, or the area of East Weber Road and Cleveland Avenue. Police believe that Sequoia was a victim of foul play. At a press conference, Detective Chuck Radich believes that there are witnesses who might have information about Sequoia's whereabouts. He stated that these witnesses in the community could bring closure for the family. The FBI has also gotten involved with the case. Also at the press conference were the family and friends of Sequoia who made an emotional plea for information. Bree Belcher, who is like a sister to Sequoia, stated, We just want some closure. The agony, the sleepless nights. This is somebody's child. This is a human. No one should go through this. Regina Love, Sequoia's biological mother, said, We've been through four seasons and still no Sequoia. Devin Sequoia Cooper is a black transgender woman five feet five inches tall and weighs 145 pounds. She has black hair worn in braids and brown eyes. She was wearing a black and white summer dress and black and white baby fat brand sandals. At the time of her disappearance, she was 33 years old. Central Ohio Crime Stoppers has offered a reward up to $10,000 for information leading to Sequoia's location. You can call them at 614-461-TIPS or submit online at www.stopcrime.org. All tips are anonymous. You can also contact the Columbus Police Department at 
Okay. So you said the last place you were seen was in Ohio. Is that correct? Yes, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, as you uh, saw in the presentation, she went out to get some bottled water and it wasn't far from her home at all. And the next thing they know, she hasn't returned. Uh, they found the car, but uh, you know the feeling that the the license plate was switched out. So you know, luckily we do have the FBI looking at this case, and in in an interview that was on television, uh, Sequoia's mother, birth mother, was there. Her friend Bree Belcher, but there was also her mother, who was considered like her godmother. And she also spoke at the press conference and all of them, of course, I mean, I, I can't imagine what it's like to have a child missing, a friend missing, you know, not knowing what happened to them. So they're still working on this case, really hoping that somebody will say something and let us know what happened to her. You know, um, this, this goes on quite a bit, especially with transgender people where there's so much uh, of a hate crime. I don't, yeah. I'm not saying that it's a hate crime, but uh, just the fact, you know, their disappearance or whatever's happened to her. So we are just praying that someone will come forward. Something will give resolution to her family and friends who, who are looking for her. Absolutely. If you know anything, please, please contact the police. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. What comes to mind today is purpose. We all want to know what our purpose is. We ask the question many times, what is my purpose? What am I meant to do? Where am I meant to go? What is my destiny? Everything that we've gone through in our lives, the people that have been in our lives, the occupations that we've done in our lives are still doing, even the things that have been heartbreaking or painful, it all comes together to allow us to sit still, allow us to really ask our souls, which our souls know the direction that we've agreed to take being here, what our purpose is. Purpose can be large, purpose can be small, but it doesn't matter, it's still a purpose. Even what we consider being at the right place at the right time, helping someone, that's part of your purpose. So know that there is a place for you. Know that there is a place for everyone on this earth. It is a matter of allowing ourselves to ask the question and allowing spirit to lead us to the purpose that we've been called on. You have a purpose. All right, guys, I'd just like to leave you with, with this closing thought. Our loved ones are never truly lost. They're only hidden from our sight. God bless and thank you for listening. If you have any information regarding a missing or murder case, contact your local authorities. Join us again next time on Looking for the Lost. Our theme music is written by Lynn Willever.